motivation, success, epigenetics, rock and roll, fitness, relationships, romance, travel, all this interesting stuff. And they say to just focus on one thing at a time. How are you supposed to do that? How are you supposed to filter out all the distractions on x.com? YouTube shorts? Facebook marketplace? Instagram? What your friends are saying? Talking about who to vote for? You guys ever heard of Carl Jung? Carl Jung literally like built a study away from his house because he knew that he needed a place every day to go where he didn't have any distractions. You need to be somewhere like that for a couple hours. You need to be getting your cardio. You need to not be just online. Sometimes you can be online while you're getting cardio, right? But sometimes you need to turn off that phone. And I'm talking to myself, by the way. Sometimes you need to turn off that phone. Turn off that laptop. And go into some quiet place. With a notebook and a pen. Start writing down the stuff you want to do. But your mind has been too busy. Focusing. There's some kind of thing where we got to live in the present, right? But we also got to prepare for the future at the same time. It's not at the same time, though. Because while you're doing things in the present to further your goals, you're also doing other things to prepare you for tomorrow. So, okay, I'm going to be turning off the phone for two hours, okay? I'll be pulling out my notebook and a pen. And I'm going to be writing down what I need to do. Because in my brain, there's about 10 different things that I want to do in the next couple weeks that aren't compatible with each other. For instance... The school semester is starting next week and there are some classes I wanted to take. I wanted to visit my friend down south. I wanted to go to Texas. I wanted to go to Japan, right? How do I do things that I want to do but yet, 
have the discipline to say, this one has to go another time. I can't go to that concert. And it's a concert I really wanted to go to, Jane's Addiction. I can't go to that right now. I want to do the, some an open mic here and there, okay? But I also need to work up to how do I get a one-hour gig where I'm just playing. It's my own gig, right? The reason I haven't gotten to that point yet is because I haven't been disciplined about it. I haven't created that goal, right? Yesterday, I went on a good bike ride. I should be going on a bike ride every day. Even if it's not a long bike ride. Maybe I'll go on one tonight. Not too late. Maybe I'll do that. But then I was like, oh, I'm going to go back and, and use the library because they have a studio there. I want to go run the track, you know. It's all about time management. And I have to start really scheduling stuff out. I have to start keeping track of when I eat, what I eat. You know, I it's just been 48 years. It's just been a free for all, you know. That's what it's been. It's been a fear of writing down goals almost. Because I remember I used to be really into writing down goals. And some religious person told me that it was like that making goals was kind of a slap in the face to God because God only knows your plans. You don't know your plans. You can't act like you have control over your life. But you know, when you think about that, that's not very uh, conducive for happiness, is it? To say, oh, I'm just going to put it all in God's hands. Now, there is an element to being like, I'm not going to worry about too much. What is it they say? You got to work like there isn't a God and pray like there is one. I don't know if I just made that up or if that's, I don't know. Um, but basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm taking responsibility for the fact that I'm not further along, honestly. I'm being stoic right now. And I'm saying that I actually have the talent to go much further than I have. And there are certain people in my life that remind me that and even say, what the fuck are you doing? I'm talking about like musician friends of mine. They're like, I don't understand why you're not doing more. Well, it's because I like too many goddamn things. And I get caught up with too many things. And I get caught up with, with dramas of people. And, and I'm worried about my ex-girlfriend who I'm friends with. Stuff she's going through. So. I don't know. I do not know. I'm an absolute beginner. Really. When I think about it at 48 years old. I'm willing to sort of admit that I haven't been doing things right. And I'm willing to be harder on myself than I have been. And I don't know exactly what that entails, but I guess I'm ready to fucking grow up. At the age of 48, if I decide that I'm going to fucking change my ways right now, will that mean that by the age of 50, in one year, in four and a half months or so, when I turn 50, will I be able to turn this boat around in a year?
Because in some ways I am doing better than I was five years ago. Five years ago. Wow. Five years ago was when I started working at Starbucks in Malibu. I was living out of my car. I was waking up early in the morning and drinking espresso just to wake up. I often was showering with a water bottle either n near the beach or like on this like enclave near the Safeway there or even sometimes going into the locker room and using the shower. I wasn't a young teenager doing this. 2019? I was 43. I was doing like... But you know what's weird? It was like a fucking adventure. It was like one of the funnest things ever. It was really fucking fun. Because every day, I fucking knew that I had shit to do, right? And I was like, fuck, I gotta be up early tomorrow. And I would sleep in my car. But then sometimes at work, I didn't like the work. I didn't like some of the stuff I had to do. I didn't like some of the people I had to deal with. But somehow I was able to sock that money away, man. I did it in August. I did it September. I did it October. I did it November. In December, I almost quit. I actually walked off the job, kept the job, had a, some Christmas weeks off, went on a road trip, went back in January, went back in February. In March of 2020, I got laid off because of COVID. Everyone was freaking out. Except for me. I was like, oh my God, I'm free. I'm fucking free, bro. And you know what? A month before that, I'd made a video for a YouTube channel of mine called Debt Free Jair. It's the only video I made for that. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get out of debt. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I, I need to, you know, just keep working. And then he, a month later, I get laid off from my job. And I'm happier than I've been in ages. I started hanging out at my friend's house in South Central. I didn't have to go back to work. I had a little bit of savings. I remember I bought a GoPro camera. I was like, I'm tasting freedom. But you also had to wear a mask wherever you went. You couldn't drive sometimes. People were getting pulled over in Los Angeles for driving or going to the beach. I started to feel this mixed feeling of like, this is kind of weird. I, li I like feeling free, but I also feel like I could get in trouble just for driving my car down the street or going to the beach. This is a weird combination. 
And I talked to my twin brother, and he was up here in Santa Rosa. And he's like, why don't you come up here for a little while, right? So I came up to Santa Rosa. April of 2020. And a month later, I was able to start getting my unemployment from my job. And I saved that money. And then, God, I was here April, May, June, July, August. And then in September, right around September 9th or September 10th, Oh, a few months before that, I had wanted to travel to Europe, and I couldn't. I bought a ticket, and my ticket got canceled. I didn't actually get paid back either. So I was like, I'm going to do a road trip. I'm going to do a fucking road trip. I have money saved. Got my car. I had like, it was like an intersection of stuff I'd never had. Free time, a car, and money saved. I'm going on a freaking road trip to end all road trips. I remember I was at my friend Tika's house and I was like, okay, I'm going to go today. And I was like, where are you going to go? I don't know, but I'm going to go somewhere. I was going to go to Washington. But then, if you look up September 9th, 2020, there was fires all along Oregon. Like, all along the five, you know. Um, so, I drove to Sonoma. And I sat there. I got gas, and I sat there in Sonoma for a few minutes. And I was like... I'm going to start driving east. I'm going to go to Nevada. I'm going to go see what Reno's like, what Truckee's like, right? I drove to Truckee. I went to the uh, grocery outlet in Truckee. And then I found some kind of rest stop. And I was just like so at peace just hanging out in the rest stop in Truckee. Okay. I'm just hanging out in my car. I'm in Truckee. And I'm like, I feel free. I like this feeling of like, I can just drive. Right? And I wanted to get out of California. I just felt like California had all these draconian laws. I crossed the border into Nevada, I believe it was September 11, 2020. And I went into Reno and I parked my car in Reno and I was just walking along the river walk, you know, hanging out there. And then I went to this place called, I think it was called Silver Springs or something. I don't know. I don't remember, but kind of by Carson City and all that. I went to Carson City, and I just kept, I was sleeping in my car. I wasn't paying for rent. I, I was just sleeping in my car. But then I went to this place about an hour east, and I found a little motel. It was pretty cheap. It was like 30, 40 bucks, somewhere around there. And then my brother drove his car out there. We started caravanning. We went all through Nevada. And let's see, we went. We drove over to Las Vegas, but we didn't really stay in Vegas very long. Uh, we went to like uh, Arizona. We went to, I don't know if it's a Grant, something Forks, Arizona. 
and Tucson. We met up with my 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 second cousin in Tucson. And we went to Wilcox. We met Christopher Travels, who has a YouTube channel. I thought about buying land there. Uh, but I wasn't sure exactly where. And then we got a call from our friend Bill, who's boyfriend of our friend Natalie, that she was going downhill with the cancer, which she found out she had had a few months previously. So we were going to head east, but we came back to Los Angeles. And I was not that happy to go back to Los Angeles, to be honest. I really was digging the open road. I was really digging it. But we went back to Los Angeles. This was like October. So. We went and saw Natalie. And then we wanted to be available to be able to see Natalie, right? So we stayed at this place where it was like you could rent it by the week. And it was like these bunk beds in this like sober living home in the valley. And that was kind of weird, to be honest. I don't think I would do that again. A lot of weird people arguing and stuff. But we made it work. You know, we would go go to the park, North Hollywood Park. We would go different places. Meet up with my friend Trina. And then Trina actually, and then um, my friend Clara said that we could stay at her apartment because she was in Europe for a couple, and, and we could stay at her apartment and just pay like 175 bucks for the maid. So we did that. We stayed in, T we went to Tucson. Uh, that was like the beginning of November, I think. And then my friend Trina asked if we wanted to house sit her. So I think we went, I believe we went back to Santa Rosa and then we went back to LA and house sat in December. So that was the end of 2020, 2020. And actually I remember meeting Hans, I met Hans Kim at the North Hollywood Park because there was an open mic there. And it was before he was famous. He was actually on his way to Austin. So, um, 2020, end of 2020, early 2021, went back to Santa, oh wait, I remember, saw Susie, she got mad about something. But then we made up. But she was kind of freaking out about a few things. And then we started going down the 101. Back to Santa Rosa. So we were back in Santa Rosa. Oh, and then actually when I was staying at that place, that halfway house or whatever it was, it was like a drug rehab, but I wasn't a druggie. It was, no, they call it a uh, sober living house. That's what it was. So I actually bought an acre of land while I was there online. And I really wanted to see it. So I decided to go back again. 
I couldn't figure out where it was. Yeah, I couldn't figure it out because it was on these like really rough roads. So that was pretty bad. I don't know. Hopefully it's better now. Christopher said he's going to help me find it because it's out by that way in Wilcox. So that was uh, so 2021. I'm back in L.A. in February. I decide that I'm going to do another road trip. But this time, I'm just going to cut on through all the way and go east, right? This time, I just fucking slam through Arizona, slam through New Mexico. I was like, I got to be in Austin by the 7th, okay? I think I got there on the 6th. I think that March 6th, 2021 was my first time in Austin. Which means I would have been. Oh, so I was actually. Okay, so I was 45 at that point. First time ever in Austin. 15 years after my my brother told me about how much he thought I would like Austin. See how long it takes me to get around to this stuff? Oh. Before I went there, I went to Marfa, Texas. I went to... Uh, which was off the beaten path a little bit. San Antonio. Austin. Okay, so I'm in Austin. I see that Jamar Neighbors is playing at Native Hostel in Austin. So I go to that. And then Tony Hinchcliffe's playing too. I'm like, this is so cool, man. Wow. Fun. Life was really starting to feel like a roller coaster. Like, wow, I was going to all these nature spots. And then I was like, I have to go to Nashville. I have to be in Nashville by the 13th. It was like this OCD thing, right? So. I went through like Dallas, Texarkana, Little Rock, Arkansas. Memphis, and then Nashville. Now, I'd been in Nashville in 2015, but this is my first time since then, so it was like over six years later, hanging out in Nashville. Very excited to be there. And there was this guy that lived there who had this place you would rent out. He'd rent out these, like, this house, and then he, there was like a bus he'd run out on the property, and all these, and he had this music place to play. But uh, I didn't rent it that time. I actually was only there for a few days, and then I decided to keep going. I wanted to see some places. I wanted to see Florida. I'd never been to Florida, right? And I'm like, I'm going to drive to Huntsville. I went to Huntsville, and then I went. Muscle Shoals, check out the recording studios. Did my laundry. Uh, then I went way through all this Alabama stuff to get to Mobile, right? From Mobile, I crossed the border into Florida. Pensacola. Oh my God, I'm in Florida. First time ever in Florida. I went to Pensacola. I went through Tallahassee. And then I went to Jacksonville. And I met a friend of mine who travels around on a little bicycle. And I ended up giving her a ride. kind of being screwed because she kind of like begged me to give her a ride and I felt like I had to. And went to Fort Myers. Went to 
Fort Lauderdale, all down, up and down the coast there in Florida. I, I, I stopped by Hippocrates Institute, uh, went to Boca Raton, all that stuff. I like Florida. I don't have anything against Florida, honestly. I did not go to Miami, though, because it was spring break time, and I just felt like it was going to be crazy. Oh, the other thing that happened in Florida was I realized that my I started getting charged again for my Planet Fitness account, which had, had stopped around you know COVID time, right? So it started charging me again. So I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to freaking use it then, right? Started using the gyms. I reenacted it in, uh, I can't even think of the name of the place in Florida. It's, uh, anyway, somewhere in Florida, I reenacted my account. So I was able to take showers. Woohoo! So I left Florida. I went to. Savannah, Georgia. I always wanted to see what Savannah, Georgia was like. I went to South Carolina. I went to Charleston. I stayed in Charleston for a few days. That was a nice town. Very nice place. I went to Asheville, North Carolina. And then I agreed to do a songwriter circle in Nashville. So I went back to Nashville. And I ended up renting a room from that guy that had the house, right? But I kind of had a mental breakdown because I started to realize there was all this like mold and stuff and I didn't want to stay there. So, I really freaked out about the mold. I don't know if I was overly freaking out or not, but then some guy also told me the water's not good there. I don't know. I was like, I sort of freaked out because also some of the people there I, I wasn't crazy about. Um... I think I'm going to shave my head again. Yes, I think I am going to shave my head again. Um, okay, so. Flor uh, so, Nashville. I did some hiking around. I did some little open mics, stuff like that. And then I left Nashville. I went to Hurricane Mills. I remember I was really happy to be out of uh, Nashville for some reason. I liked it, but at the same time, I wanted I wanted to go back to Austin. That's what I wanted to do. My friend Johnny was there with his doggies. Oh, I went to Mississippi. I went to Mississippi. I went to Tupelo, Mississippi. And I was like, oh, I want to see Elvis's birthplace and all that. And that was cool. I bought a White Stripes record, White Blood Cells. I really liked Tupelo, Mississippi. That was like one of my places where I was like, wow, this place is underrated. I don't know why, but I really liked it. 
then someone said that Clarksdale was worth visiting, and it was just a few hours east, actually. So I was supposed to be going west, but I wanted to go to Clarksdale. So I went to Clarksdale, and I got there in the middle of a jukebox festival. Or actually, the juke festival was just starting up. It was going to be starting up. And I was just crashing in my car, you know? And I did that. It was fun. When did I go? I went to Oxford, Mississippi, too. I don't know. I think that was before. I don't know exactly when that was, but. That might have been after. I'd have to look at my. You know, I have a bunch of photos on Instagram and I can look at it and get the exact, uh, you know. You know what would be cool is do like a, almost like a uh, slideshow of, with the pictures and everything, you know. Um. Anyway, so I left Mississippi going towards Texas, right? So... I think I went through Louisiana. Went through Louisiana. Didn't stop in New Orleans, but I went through like, uh, you know, uh, Shreveport. And then I went into Texas. I saw my friend Jason there in Texas where he is now. Lib well, he was in Liberty City, but we met up in Kilgore at some place. And I went to Tyler, Texas, and I went to, uh, I think I went through Dallas, and then I went to Austin. So, my second time in Austin, this time I stayed for about a week. The dogs are really fucking loud over here. So I stayed there for like a week. Hanging out with my friend Johnny. Going to the river. Going to karaoke. Going to the Barton Springs pool. I didn't really go to a lot of the shows there though. I just, I don't know. Um, yeah, so... Um, that was also where I went to the uh, online funeral for my friend Natalie. I was in Austin somewhere. I think I was at like a Sprouts parking lot. So there, here we are in... Um, must have been April. Oh, no, now it's May. Now we're getting into May here. May 2021. My friend Dante calls me up. This is the way my life works sometimes. He's like, dude, I got a place you could stay for a little while in Los Angeles. It's like a little vacant apartment with no electricity that I just, you know, he, he was like managing this apartment and he had been staying there and it was just available for a few weeks or something. And I don't know. I'm just like, wow, well, why not? I don't, you know, stay in LA rent free. I don't know. Fuck. Day I got back there was May 10th. I remember. Uh, And I'm just like, oh my God, it's nice to have a fucking just mat to sleep on. And you know what I mean? It was just like, and then I called my brother and he came and joined me. And we actually stayed in LA for like quite a while. I didn't leave for almost two months. So weird. I mean... Basically, we weren't supposed to be in that place, but Dante, but my friend was like, oh, it doesn't matter because I know the loopholes. So basically, he was letting me stay in this place that nobody was supposed to be staying in and didn't have electricity. And then some lady was knocking on our door, telling us to get out and blah, blah, blah. So then I started jamming it um, with Jamie and Barney and Topanga, and we did a gig and 
early, it was either late June, early July, something like that. And my car was starting to have problems. So I went back to Santa Rosa early July. Was going to go to Washington later on in July. And then my car broke down. Like, it broke down with all my stuff in it. Going to Heels, like, we were, like, near Cloverdale. So we were only, like, a half an hour past Santa Rosa, right? But basically, my car had broke down to such an extent. And I remember thinking, ah, maybe I should get a fucking oil change. I should have got a fucking oil change. Because last time I got an oil change was... Yeah, a while back. So, that was my fault. Florida, actually, was the last time. So, oh, man. That was a bummer to lose my car like that. So, basically, I had to really leave a lot of stuff behind and just go in with my brother's car. We went to Washington, right? My brother had this plot of land. My older brother had a plot of land that we were going to camp out on. And then he also had this warehouse that we could maybe hang out in sometime. So we were in Washington, Everett and Marysville. And I loved it at first being on the land. I was just like, I, you know, it was still like pandemic time. So I still kind of just wanted to keep my distance from people. Not because I was afraid of getting sick, but because people were so weird about, oh, you wearing a mask, wearing da -da 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 -da, you know, all that trying to patrol you and all that, you know, and I did not like that. Got, um, and also because there was like land where I could just walk around, you know, and it was just great. But then there was like a freaking uh, drone all coming and spying on me. I'm like, God, I can't fucking get away from this shit, right? And but then we started staying in the warehouse. We started, like, you know, just staying there, you know. I had this one room with the couch, and Brian had this other room. Only problem is the warehouse was, like, right by Everett Amtrak, so a lot of junkies and shit like that. People screaming all the time. But could you imagine getting to stay in this really cool warehouse, though? It was, like, really, it was gritty, but it was, like, really cool. I could play my music there. And that's around the time I met Ty Wagner, my friend Ty Wagner. So, um, but then it started getting, like, I was enjoying it a lot, but the bums there were kind of driving me crazy. And one time someone tried to break in, breaking the glass, and I, had, I yelled at them and stuff, and cops came. So it was starting to feel a little sketchy, you know. But then we moved into a house in Marysville. That was like right around Halloween. Halloween 2021, right? Basically, we were at that house from Halloween 2021 to July 2023. So almost two years I was in this house in Marysville. What did I do that whole time? Well, I started working a lot of different jobs. Um, I tried to get hired at this one job and I got, it was at the airport, at Everett Airport, but I would have had to get a vaccine. So they, I didn't want to get a vaccine. Okay. So I turned down this job because of that, which is, you know, uh, and but then I got this job called Kite K Y T E, where I was driving cars like rental cars to people. So, what you would do is either you would pick up or drop off rental cars. If you dropped them off, you were responsible for getting back to the rental car place, or sometimes you'd Sometimes you'd have other assignments on the way, but like, um, so a lot of times I would just like walk back or whatever, you know, it was a weird job, but I kind of like got around in Seattle a lot, you know, 
Sometimes I'd have my fold-up bike and I'd do that. And it was very, like, loosey-goosey in terms of the scheduling, like, which isn't really always that good for me because I'm just like, uh, I, I, I just didn't really treat it very professionally, right? I think I need to start treating things more professionally. But... Then I started doing these temp jobs through this temp work company, right? My first job was this place. It was really fucking hard. I don't know. It was like these, like, this warehouse. Uh, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And I was like, fuck that, right? Well, then they got me another job at this moving company. And that was kind of weird because you'd be like in these moving trucks with these people. And some of the people were pretty weird, man. And this one guy kept asking to use my phone. And then he was asking me for a ride. I'm like, I just don't want to fucking be around this fucking bullshit. So I quit that job. And then they got me a job at this, um, like, recycling place. Which I kind of like... So what I would do is I would, uh, I did this thing where it was, uh, they would melt styrofoam. So you had to chop up the styrofoam and put it and melt it down. And then like you take out this goo and the goo would dry. That was a really weird job. But, um. From there, I met somebody who told me about InstaWork. He's like, oh, yeah, it's great. You just get this app, and then you can just get all these jobs, and you can just work different jobs, different places. So I did that. I signed up on InstaWork. I started working at this winery. I got all these different jobs, winery job, uh, catering gigs, just all these different kinds of jobs, right? And then I remember I went back to Sonoma County for Christmas and break and everything. Came back New Year's and I had this really shitty job experience working all night at a, I think it was like a Safeway. And I quit early. So, but then the next day, I got wind that I got, that I could do, that I could apply for a prep cook job at the uh, Tulalip Casino. So I was like, oh, cool, you know, because you can make money at a casino, right? So I had that job. I, I had this prep job, prep cook job for like, I don't know, January through like, Oh, I quit in June. That's right. I quit like mid-June. So uh, not that long, I guess, half a year. And I kind of liked that job because you, well, I liked it and I didn't like it. Sometimes I didn't like the people and sometimes I did. It was a, it was a real mixed bag, you know. But... Some of the people were really cool. But I remember talking to the chef and he lived in Japan for a while and that inspired me to go to Japan. So I left Washington a month after I quit that job. I left on 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven 2023, I left. I came back to Sonoma County. I must have been in Sonoma County for a few months. And then I did my whirlwind Asia trip. I went to Japan. 
I went to Philippines. I went to Thailand. I went back to Japan. And then, and that's all, lots of videos on that on YouTube if you want to find out about that, okay? Got back in March of this year. And now we're five months after I've been back. What have I done since I've been back? A little bit of work here and there. A little bit of travel. I have traveled. I went to Costa Rica too. I went to Vegas and Chicago and Seattle. So I definitely did a little traveling in the last five months too, but I'm in this situation right now where I'm trying to figure out what the next step is. And it's a little bit tricky. I have a friend that she wants me to stay with her in San Pedro. I'm sorry, Long Beach, not San Pedro. Um, I have opportunities here for stuff, but I don't know if I want to stay here. I'm all mixed up. I want to go to Japan. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm just, I'm trying to fucking figure it out. I want to play music. Um, but I just figured by doing this video, I would come to some kind of closure. And I really haven't, but that's okay. I'm going to go do something. <laughs>